what is he fuck me for? Come on now, dog. Come on, man. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. LeBron James. You're not the beard, you're not the system, you're the problem. What's up? What's up, everybody? How y'all doing, man? How y'all doing? Um, ah, where do we start, man? Where do we start? How we feeling? Uh, I don't know what kind of night y'all had tonight, but uh, definitely share it in the comments. Uh, I, I definitely have an agenda uh, that I do want to go over today, even though this was a interesting day for me. Um, uh, for me, WrestleMania is 
wrestling in general means a lot to me. Uh, and so um, enjoying WrestleManias with, you know, my brother, my family and, and close friends, it's uh, – it it doesn't uh doesn't get old for me you know like i cherish those moments and so today uh got to uh got to enjoy wrestlemania with, with some good people and uh you know i was like as soon as this ends i gotta get home and do midnight madness and, and and um and be able to do this however uh besides this interesting day uh tomorrow the dallas mavericks they're having this uh this market sell right they're doing a whole market sell tomorrow, and uh, it's going to be from, like, 10 to 3 p.m. So this is, like, before tomorrow's game against the Rockets. Now, I don't want to say too much, but uh, thankfully, man, thankfully because of this show, because of the reach this has had, I have an opportunity to go tomorrow before they open it to the public, you know? And tomorrow I'm vlogging this entire experience tomorrow, but that means I have to get there earlier, right? So that means for me to be able to execute that with enough energy, with enough sleep, with enough drive, right? Because I got to record and find items that I want, you know? Um, so I'm definitely going to take advantage of the opportunity and make sure I record it properly. So for, because I forgot who uh, commented, I think it was, I can't remember the, the who commented, but they had said, um, uh, yeah, I remember the name, but I just can't remember the name, if you know what I'm saying. But they had comment for me to vlog it uh, because they live in Australia and they wouldn't be able to, you know, go and enjoy it. So they would just like to see it from, from that perspective. So I instantly thought of them, you know, and uh, I was like, I, I got to I gotta get that vlog going, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I'm definitely going to do that. And um yeah, and so in the meantime, tonight I definitely want to talk about PJ Washington. I want to talk about WrestleMania, if y'all want to talk about WrestleMania. And here is Mr. Woolwoosh, Mr. Sylvester. He's camera shy, as you can tell. Uh, Div uh, asked, requested for him, so here he is. He's, uh, he, he was in trouble today. He was in trouble today. We went to an um, a open field. And uh, he kept running out of the open section of that field. So uh, trying to give him more field to run on. And instead of doing that, he wanted to run away from me. So, yeah, this is Sylvester. Sylvester, say hi to everybody. Say hi, Chubby. Anyway, we'll put him uh, <laughs> We'll put him to the side. All right. Let's get, let's get into the show, man. Let's, let's get into what people are talking about. Hope y'all, hope you're having a good night, man. Hope you're having a good night. Uh, Richard Case in the building. Uh, he said, what's up, everyone? Just dropped by to say Maxie, Dwight, and Tim Suck. We'll catch show tomorrow. It's late for seniors like me, Maxie, Dwight. And Tim. <laughs> you know what I do appreciate, Richard? Um, I do appreciate the consistency, you know? I do appreciate that. Um, as y'all know, uh, Midnight Madness, it's uh, more of a relaxed show. Uh, it's more laid back in a way for us to kind of just have a conversation as to poll as opposed to debating and, and going back and forth. I think uh, we save those energies for, you know, pre and post game shows. Right. So uh, today is just kind of more, again, the, the whole point of midnight madness is just to have a more relaxed conversation um, and just give overview thoughts of like what happened during the week. And um, again, it's, it's the conversation is always open to talk about anything. Right. Noah is in the building. What's up, Noah? Hold on. I know I got a sound effect for you, Noah, and I'm not even playing it, but here you go. Acknowledge me! Noah said, uh, WrestleMania night one was starting to get boring, but then that main event happened. It was great. Now all they have to do if get, is excuse me, <clears throat> is give uh, Cody the win tomorrow, please, and Stone Cold return. Ah, see, so you... Pff, bro, uh, I thought WrestleMania night one was amazing. I thought it was great. The main event was truly a main event. Uh, with no interferences, nothing like that, to be able to pull it off the way they pulled it off, that was nothing short of amazing, man. And probably Dave Meltzer is only going to give that four stars when it deserves a five star. Um, if tonight was any indication of what of what um is going to be tomorrow, I have absolutely no idea what to expect tomorrow. But I expect craziness. 
you know, for that main event. So we'll see, man. And I hope Stone Cold does return. I definitely do. Uh, Noah says, I got PJ Washington, uh, uh, I'm guessing Jersey, is shipping to my house. It's going to be here for three to f- or four days. I've seen enough. PJ could be all team defense. And if his three ball is falling, then look out. Great point. Great point. We're going to get into PJ Washington. We're, we're going to look at his stats. We're going to look at his defensive numbers. When you talk about trades, man, the trade to get PJ Washington was nothing short of amazing. That was that was one of those trades where you're gonna look back and like, I don't give a damn what we gave up. <laughs> who who we give up? Seth Curry, Grant Williams in a first? That's it? For Grant Williams? I mean for for PJ Washington. You know, and, and it's it's crazy because he had a pretty bad rap early on in his career because of the whole Brittany Renner situation, right? And um, and I feel like he's been able to utilize that situation and energy and unfortunate situation with how it kind of went, you know? It's not like it was bad, but it's just, it, it got messy, right? Um, and I feel like that's been able to focus him, you know? He, he's, a, he's a father now, uh, and he's focused in the way he's been playing. Now he's playing in a city where we're not, not that Charlotte is a bad city. I think Charlotte's a great city. Uh, but he's home now, right? And and when you play for your home team, I'm pretty sure it's like this. There's like this, um, I don't know, but there's a different level of pride, you know? And I, and you can see it, man. You can see the pride he's playing with. And it's amazing to see. And it kind of it bodes well for the Mavericks moving forward and, uh, and what they're going to be able to do, you know? So I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Uh, Diff says, let's do this. Yes, sir. Uh, don't forget the like. Yeah, don't forget the like. I know it is uh, members only, but you know, we we'll definitely want her to like. Yeah, that way, that way, I know y'all like these shows. If not, I'd have to reevaluate. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I want to see your dog too today. Well, I already showed him, so you, you got that. Uh oh, Black Noir is in the building, man. What's up, Black Here Noir? Here comes the money. Here we go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Black Noir in the building. Oh, hold my latte is here too. <laughs> What's up, guys? How y'all doing? I appreciate the TGK logo. I appreciate that. Oh, Div says, um, that is the cutest dog. <laughs> Man, he, he is. He is. That's my, my COVID baby. Um, I'm very upset. Very upset today. Having to chase him from a baseball field across the roadway. And it's embarrassing because I feel like I'm a bad dog parent, right? Like, some... Can, when I have him in the open land, there's like no control over him. So I'm, I have to do more training. But when I'm in a closed environment, like in my room or in the house, he listens to everything. Every command, sits down, gives me paw, sits, stands, all that good stuff. He listens to so many commands and is disciplined in the house. Outside the house, no discipline. It's crazy. It's crazy. Big J in the building. I got a big amount. I took a different route. I have no pick or the little. Big J says, what's up, fam? What's up, fam? So are you, my guy? I see you trying to make a big decision. I see you, bro. I see you. Uh, Nancy in the building. She says, uh, hey, how are you doing tonight? Looking forward to the game tomorrow. I just thought of it. Damn, we do have a game tomorrow. And I also, damn, I got to do a pregame show tomorrow, huh? <sighs> trying to think, because if I'm going to go to this... um. Mavs market early on. Can I get back home in time to do the pregame show? That's crazy. I'm going to be on the time crunch tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Latte says, uh, TJ, you think Cody going to win tomorrow? I think so. I think so. I think you don't make him lose tonight and build that idea that he can lose tomorrow with the idea that he will lose tomorrow, you know? What do you guys want to talk about? So I I fully anticipate that he wins tomorrow, but I think tomorrow because it is uh, tribal rules or whatever the case may be, I I and I fully anticipate like the Avengers Endgame kind of scenario tomorrow. I think it's perfect for it. I don't think you. I think in tomorrow you you do not need to have a man's match. Right? It's tribal rules. There's no anything goes. You need the craziest of all craziest main events that you could possibly get. If you could get Cena out there, if you could get Stone Cold Steve Austin out there, if you could get Jey Uso, 
you need to get everyone that's been done wrong by the bloodline. And the reason I want Stone Cold out there is because of the connection with The Rock. I think you need to you need to do everything possible. That way you could say WrestleMania 40. WrestleMania 40's main event was the greatest of all time. I, I think you have an opportunity to pull that off tomorrow. We got DV in the building. What's up, DV? What's going on, my guy? It's, uh, it's a bit of a sticky one still. He said, uh, what's good, fam? What's good with you, man? You already know. You already know. We, we doing? Oh, and Nancy, I'm doing good tonight. I'm doing good tonight. A little tired. I played outdoor basketball, full court, two games, and um, I've been tired ever since. I'll tell you that much. And then WrestleMania was crazy. Frank in the building. What's up, Frank? TGK, yes. Uh, DV says, kind of early to be talking about the offseason, but DJJ is actually a menace on defense. If him and PJ work on offense this offseason, it's over for the league. Yeah, if, if DJJ can improve that shot, imagine you probably wouldn't need a, a number three, you know? But you need a number three. Uh, nice said, what's good, broski? Luke I got the league shook. We coming for the chip this year. Yeah, and I think... Uh, like I said, after yesterday's game, it gives you nothing but confidence, right? It's like, damn, we could play this good without Luca, without Lively, without Green, without Kleba. It lets you know that this team is deep, and who knows what could happen tomorrow, you know? Who knows? Uh, DV says, we have to resign DJJ, and I wouldn't mind leaving uh, the starting five and just getting more bench production, but I'm hoping the new starting threes, too. Yeah, I, I think you have to look at TSJ. What do we do with TSJ in the offseason, you know? If we trade him, get a three out of him. And uh, and I know I said this in uh, We Talked Mavs last night. I wanted to give THJ credit. Because, again, he was having a horrible game, bro. He was having a horrible game last night. And he, in, in a pressure-packed moment, with the clock running down, he was able to get you an assist to P.J. Washington. He deserves credit for it. Even, even for that. That was the most important play of the game that he did. Not all those other bad decisions he made. Give THJ some credit. Um, yeah, mine didn't hit your sound effect, did my ball? He said, uh, make the pregame part of the market. Oh, no, nah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I, I want the market vlog to be its own video by itself and then get home in time to do a pregame show. Um, and then I'll release the market, the vlog market video on Monday um, or Sunday night. Just depends how quick I could get to it. But yeah, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to do too much in one day, you know. Even though, the, even though that is a lot. Uh, I can't wait to see the Mavs content guys play basketball this summer after we win the chip and King visits. I can't wait either. I can't wait either. You know, are they gonna come visit? That's the other big part. Uh, D, uh, DV says uh, Kawhi about to miss his fourth game. He really trying to be 115% for the match. Damn. And they keep winning, man. And they keep winning. That's the other thing. They keep winning, bro. All right. I think it is. I think we got through all the comments. Let's go ahead and uh, let's um, let's look into some stats, man. If y'all don't mind, let's, let's take a look into some things here with the Dallas Mavericks. And let me put on some uh, background music, right? All right, man. Uh, here it goes. Here we go. Trying to find my other waters. All right. Uh, so let's take a look here, man. This is a advanced analytics. You already know. I, 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 you know, I'm going off of the regular season per mode per game in the last 15 games. Okay. Over the last 15 games, there are two teams that are 13 and two. That's the Boston Celtics and the Dallas Mavericks. Hmm. You don't say, right? You don't say. That's crazy. Hold on. All right. Over this time, the Mavericks are 13 and 2. Um, points per game, they're averaging 116. And don't tell me what they're giving up, but. They're shooting 37% from three, about 49% from the field. Okay. 13 and three over the last 15. That, that is a pretty decent sized chunk of, of games, you know? Well, let's take a look at the defensive dashboard 
for the last 15 games. The Mavericks are up here. Now, this is uh, one of my favorite stats, and this is a defensive field goal percentage. Defended field goal percentage. Yeah, so that's what I want to see. That's crazy, bro. Over the last 15 games, ladies and gentlemen, the Dallas Mavericks have the best def- defended field goal percentage in the league with 43.7%. That means they're defending their ass off out there. That's wild, bro. To say that the Mavericks have one of the best defenses, uh, even even with the fact that, that this is how they're defending, 43.7%, like, what? And that's the last 15 games. So I, I want y'all to see this stuff so y'all can see. So y'all can see. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, is, this isn't this is a joke, man. Um, I don't know what the hell this is. Let's go with Clutch. Let's go over the last 15 games. Over the last 15 games, the Mavericks are 5-1 and one in the Clutch. Again, they, they, they've, been, they've been one of the Clutcher teams all season. Let's look at all season segments. Uh, the Mavericks are number two right behind the Lakers. Again, we, we got we got one we have one of the best clutch teams. Um, there's no doubt about that, man. Now let's let's let's, get, <laughs> let's take a look at the players, man. Let's get into uh, our, our guy, Mr. PJ Washington. I'm gonna find him here in a second. Let's go over the last 15 games, and then let's put a. Uh, all right all right so over the last 15 games man pj washington he's been uh defending an average of 13.5 attempts in these games and uh his defended field goal percentage has been a 42.4 42.4 is going to win you a lot of games uh i know certain games he defends a lot better than he defends a lot worse. He's going to defend a lot better most of the time. But if you're shooting five, uh, six for 14 eh, against him, that's not that's not the greatest. Um, now, let's take a look at last game against uh, the Warriors. Let's see what he ended up doing. Um, damn. P.J. Washington, bro. What? P.J. Washington defended 28 shot attempts yesterday. P.J. Washington defended against 28 shot attempts yesterday. 28. And they only made 12 on him. They shot 42.9% on him. That That's amazing. The fact that he's defending that much. The difference that, that he gives was a 7% difference of whenever he defends people versus how they do against anyone else. P.J. Washington, man. What the hell? What the hell? Let's see if we can see something in general for P.J. Washington. Let me see. Let's go. Let's go over the last 15 games. Or let's go over the last seven. Let's just do seven. Small sample size. All right. Washington. All right. So over the last seven games, PJ Washington is averaging 17.1 points per game. Oh my God, this dude is shooting 47% from three. <laughs> Bro, over the last seven games, PJ Washington is shooting 47% from three. That's insane, man. He's averaging almost seven rebounds a game, two assists, almost two steals, and one block. 17 points per game, 17, 7, and 2, and shooting 47% from 3. When you got a player like that, bro, when you got a player like that, that kind, that player right there could send you to the stratosphere, all right? He, he, could, he could take you to the next place, man. That is amazing, bro. That is amazing. What else we want to look at, right? Let's look at uh, last game. <clears throat> So last game, uh, what did P.J. Washington do? I know the numbers, but I don't know the numbers, right? So last game, this is amazing. He played 40 minutes, um, 18 field goal attempted, 
He made 12 of them. He shot five for eight from the three. Five rebounds, three assists, five steals, and two blocks. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. I'm going to open up the chat here in a second. I'm going to open up the chat in here in a second. Uh, my fault. Let's see. Uh... Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. 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 All right. Let's take a look at this, man. Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at PJ Washington's highlights against the Golden State Warriors. Let's turn this down. Let's skip ahead. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Let's watch this together, guys. Running the floor. Great, great run on the floor. Great little floater right there, little layup. Wide open. And see, so he just, he just getting the shot, getting his feet work done. He did mention about his feet work, and that is important when you're shooting. Right here, Steph Curry too short. You shoot over him every time. Three J. <laughs> Washington with the board. Now he yeah. wants another three. He's he's feeling it, bro. He's getting into that shot. He has that little that little dip when he when he, before he shoots. Right here. He got right in it. Now imagine Luca out there. Look at that block. Look at that effort. Let's see what we got here. Oh, cut cut to the basket. No foul. Should have been a foul. PJ Washington had a game, bro. Look at this. Ooh. That's so nice. I can see why he got 40 points one game. Oh. Gets the block. He gets his own rebound. This man is different, man. Oh, good, good. Good move he did there. Not only with the, the pass, but also with that pick that he set. He set a clean he set a clean pick, not like the Warriors do. Nice floater game. He's nice, bro. He is nice. We need to feed him more. He needs to become our third option, right? What a foul. And one. Ooh. That was amazing. Love that play, man. Man, look at the, that reach, bro. That wingspan comes into play with him. Nice pass by THJ, bro. THJ, I don't think he gets enough credit, you know? <laughs> I don't think he gets enough credit. By the way, uh, if y'all want to join the stream, then we hop below, man. We can chat it up. PJ Washington with a three. Uh. Here it goes. To win the game. Here's THJ. Eight seconds to go. He drives in. Throws it high enough for PJ. And PJ takes you home. That was amazing. That was amazing, man. That, that, that's, how, that's how you have a great night when there is no Luka Doncic, man. So, salute, salute to PJ Washington, man. Salute to PJ. Let's, let's read a couple of comments while I wait for anybody to join the, join the stream. And again, if y'all don't want to join the stream, by all means, we, we could <laughs> we get in the show, you know? But I want to make sure y'all yeah, y'all get out what y'all want to talk about. Uh oh, we got someone in the building. Hold on, hold on. We got Big J here. I got a big amount. I took a different route. I am the pick or the little. What's up, Big J? How you doing, bro? I'm all right, man. What's up with you? Not much, man. Just got home, you know. Just got done seeing WrestleMania. Are we here? <laughs> I see. What you, what you got on your mind, bro? You making a decision on the vehicle or you waiting? <laughs> uh, dude, I don't know. I, I would grab that in a heartbeat. I looked at it today and I was like, ooh, 
I went over to the dealership, but you know, she looked good though. Yeah. <laughs> do, do, do look good, man. We got Div in the building. What's up, Div? Hey, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, we got you. Awesome. So uh, that was good, man. I can't believe he's doing that well on defense and on offense. Like his shooting percentages are crazy. Yeah, man. The, the fact that he's almost shooting fifty percent over the last seven games—that's crazy. That's like if he could just if he falls off. Hopefully, the fall off is to forty percent. Or even like thirty eight, and if he's shooting those percentage percentages with Luca and Kyrie, he's and his defense, bro. It's and especially in a in a in a game against a series against the Clippers. Big J, what what, what kind of impact do you think does having a PJ Washington versus the Clippers this time uh, against a Kawhi and a PJ? What, what kind of impact do you think he has? I think with PJ and DJJ, I think they could lock up. At least if they can take care of uh, Paul George and Kawhi, mm-hmm. then I don't think Harden's gonna be that big a deal by himself. If if he can't pass anybody and he's not getting the foul calls he gets during his regular season, like he historically doesn't get in the playoffs, I think we're fine. Oh yeah. What's up, Joe? How you doing, bro? I don't Joe, think he's Mike's Oh. He just wanted to look. He didn't want to come on. Okay. No, I'm, I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I can hear you now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What's up, man? How are you gentlemen tonight? Doing good, good bro. Doing good. The, the vibes are, 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 are calm. Like, we're winning. We don't even have to be upset. We're just getting dubs, man. Like, it's great. Except uh, TGK trying to make me spend money over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a big decision to make, bro. You got a big decision to make. Uh, you know, we'll see. I mean, I still like the other one. I still like the one I got. Yeah, that's nice, man. That's nice. Uh, Joe, uh, what, what did what was like your main takeaway from that last night's game, bro? Um, I thought it was a tale of two halves. I thought that the Mavs came out, they made a bunch of shots in the first quarter, and then they went back to that. Pollyanna bullshit that they tend to do, where they kind of just like play soft. And uh, I think that Jason Kidd challenged them at ha- halftime because they played mm. better defense. They rebounded the ball. Um, they blocked shots. They got passing lanes. They got steals. I mean, they were just much mm-hmm. more physical in the second half. Like, you know, the 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 Warriors are kind of one of those teams that you you just basically you can never turn your back on them because at the moment you do, they're going to be doing something kind of you know, crappy. Um, like the, the only reason they were in that they even were, it was a close game at the end is because they kept running illegal screens and that three pointer that Chris Paul, or excuse me, that um, Steph made from the logo, Chris Paul mm-hmm. hip check DJJ into next week. And that's just kind of the <laughs> yeah. crap they do, man. So you just got to constantly, you know, hit them, hit them, hit them, hit them, hit them mm-hmm. over and over and over until they, to that quit and yeah. because th- that's what they're going to do to you and it's just a it's a playoff basketball environment i think that's what the clippers are going to do whenever we play them in the series they're going to come out mm. and kind of punch us in the mouth of, like like they did th- the first two times we played them in the playoffs and it's going to be how we respond so quite frankly i wouldn't even re- i wouldn't even wait to respond i'd just come out and throw haymakers at them right from the oh, beginning yeah. So yeah, he de- de- definitely have to, especially against the Clippers. It's just, um, I mean, guys, it's just about having a tough basketball team. I mean, you're going to be in a fight. And if you're not going to approach it like it's a fight, then we're going to go home in the first round. So I don't say that. that that's not going to happen. Well, um, <laughs> that's a reality, uh, though. Yeah, that's true. I, I wanted to, to show you all something, man. Look, check this out. Yeah, I remember when we made this list. <laughs> I forgot to update it. So, did we beat the Rockets? Yeah, we beat the Rockets. So, Mavs won. We were then 7-0, and right? And then we we predicted a loss against the Warriors. Look at us, right? So, we did lose here. So, we're 7-1. and one. And then we predicted a win against the Hawks. 
Yeah, man. Looks like uh, looks like we and then we did predict the win against the Warriors. If you would have told me Luca was sitting, I I probably wouldn't assume that. So here here's where we are, right? Um, based on what we initially predicted, we had three losses up until this point. The rest of the, the the way we got nothing but wins. Looking at the the rest of these games tomorrow against the Rockets, it's a early game, two thirty p.m. Do y'all feel we're gonna win this game tomorrow? Or how do y'all feel? What's up with uh, Big J? Uh, maybe is there any update on Luca? We know what's going on with him. He's questionable, knee soreness. I feel a lot better if Luca was playing, but I mean the thing is we just got to go out there and beat him. I mean. I know nobody wants to hear, but I think this is the game we can throw some of the youngsters out there and just let them run with the uh, with Houston, and then let our big boys beat them up like Gafford, and because they, they really don't have an answer for Gafford, you know. Yeah. I wish I wish uh, your boy was back though, uh, lively. Yeah. yeah. I bet. Court, I, bet we don't, court, I bet we don't see him until till the playoffs. Yeah. Wow, that's a long time, Joe. Then get Omex in here. I agree. Uh, yeah. Div, uh, Div, what you think about tomorrow's game, man? Like, you think that it's a win. I don't think it matters. It's going to be a hard win if uh, Luca doesn't play, but it's going to be easy if he does. Is if Kyrie playing? Oh, don't tell yeah, me he's that's... not playing. No, no, no. <laughs> no I'm, that... I'm asking. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't seen anything. The only wait, let me pull it up. I can pull it up instead of just assuming. Hold on. Well, he here's my concern. Two thirty in the afternoon is like right in the middle of that fasting period and mm. yeah I don't know maybe he wasn't, there, wasn't the Nuggets game there around 2.30 though yeah so you know so this is the injury report uh, tomorrow Luca is questionable Kleba is questionable Derek Lively Josh Josh Green and Greg Brown is uh they're all out Okay. Um, I think as long as Kyrie plays and he's got a sufficient energy level, I feel pretty good about that. I'll I'll say that's going to be a win. I hope so, man. I hope so, especially to especially to just keep keep the wins going. You know, you just got to keep the wins going. We we need uh, to win like, three more games out of this. We're we're predicted. I looked at it today. We're predicted to win fifty games this this year based upon. Vegas and a couple uh, respectable sites that are kind of projection sites. So yeah, I think I think you sent that to me, and they they got us getting fifty. So that that yeah, nice. did, I think I did send that to you. I, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, Black Noir says I read a stat that might blow your mind. Uh, Luca right now has almost the same defensive rating as guys like Draymond and Paul George. What? I thought he didn't play defense, you know? Well, you got to remember, though, it's not going with who you're covering, too. Yeah. So? But still, but still, <laughs> yeah. Div. I'm just uh, being real. Like, come on. Uh, Gina Kim says, uh, hey, TGK, great game Friday. Oh, hold on. I forgot to play your sound effect. Daddy, chill. Uh, great game Friday. Even though the refs try to cheat, do you think Luca is going to play him tomorrow? He's questionable. I'm happy Kai has been healthy. I feel like they'll rest him one game, though. Um... You know, initially, I, I kind of thought Luca was going to rest last night and then Kyrie was going to rest tomorrow. Now I feel like if Luca's good to go, I mean, why not? But, I mean, I, I, I can see us still winning even without Kleba and Lively and Luca and Green. So, you know, I bet if you guys are good to go, you go. I bet you we won't see Kyrie rest until Miami. Miami's hmm. on the road. It's the second it's on a back night to back, of a right? Yep, back to back. Yep. Yeah. So good point. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Uh Gina Kim says, since this is kind of locked, can we do a quick Mavs versus Clippers matchup prediction? Who's gonna guard who? How far is the series gonna go? I wanna say five, but six seems more realistic. Nah, Gina, I I I, I don't wanna do playoffs yet. We can still become a play in team. We can literally still be a play in team. Um as Joe would say, the 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 basketball gods, right? So I don't I don't want to get into playoff predictions right right now. Yeah, man, I I not I, right now. I'm actually always hesitant to do these game prediction things, although I can tell you that since 
February 8th, the trade deadline. I put it all out on Excel and predicted. And I'm the record that I predicted has been exactly right. Although mm. I've I've missed on a couple games. Like I predicted a couple losses against Denver and Sacramento. Mm. Um and then we won those games, but then we lost a couple of games where I thought like we would split with the Indiana and things like that. So mm. I'm pretty sure that I'm like eight, I'm like 18 and seven on predictions, but that's not against the spread. So that's not that hard, you know? So. Yeah. Huh. So you said we're going to Vegas. That's what it sounded like. No, I, I, I said it wasn't, <laughs> I, it wasn't against the spread. So I wasn't, you can't really consider those as, you know, picking wins and losses. Like, you know, when Texas plays Rice, I'm going to predict that Texas is going to win, but that doesn't mean that they're going to cover the spread, which might be 42, you know? So, mm. yeah. Hey, man, I, I think the what's going to be interesting, honestly, is, like, to see how this, these seedings go. Like, I, I just don't foresee the Clippers losing – four games and the Mavericks going undefeated the rest of the way. Uh, so unless we fall to six or something, which who would be six right now? Let me see the standings. It's Phil, uh, Phoenix. I mean, uh, third, my fault. I'm already thinking about six. I know it's yeah, – So Phoenix Denver's back six. in De- – Denver's Oklahoma back City's in first. Third. Oklahoma mm. City's third, right? Mm. Yep. All right, so let me get a vote. Uh – Big J, who, what C do you want to be, and who would you rather face in the first round? I don't care. I think we can take anybody right now. All right. Dude. Get healthy. I would love to play OKC. <laughs> if I had a choice, I'd love to play OKC, but it's not going to happen. OKC's on a three-game losing streak right now. I know. That, I would love to play them. Yeah, I just they've got not too good against them because they have no center. SGA and uh, Jalen Williams have been kind of banged up, but they're not like, like – a need like Kawhi is going with or uh, or uh, the shoulder that James Harden has. They've just kind of got nicks and bruises. I don't think they really mm. care if they're one through three. So. Damn. And the Lakers are eighth now? Yep. They could go to the sixth. Damn. Uh, Joe, do you, do you have a preference on uh, what seed you want to be and who you want to face? It is a basketball god thing right here. No, it's, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's a, you don't, listen, don't be patronizing the basketball gods there, TGK. <laughs> You'll lose your jump, jump shot and you won't be able to hit anything for two Oh, minutes. damn. <laughs> damn. Um, I, I, I really don't, I'm kind of like Big J, like, the only thing I really want to do is I'd rather see Denver in the finals than in the second, because I think we were so emotionally um, spent after the Phoenix series a couple of years ago that we didn't really show up against Golden State. So, although I think they were a better team and we were outmatched, so mm. yeah. But I would, I, I like, I like, I'll take five. I'll take five. It would be nice if we could get four, but that means, you know, the Clippers kind of got to go, yep. go yeah. on an epic losing streak, but. Hey, here's the thing. I feel like I'm talking too much, so feel free to cut me off. But um, when, you know, Kawhi is – they sent him home from Sacramento whenever um, they played last, and they're listing him as day-to-day. But the fact of the matter is, is whenever in the playoff series after us when they were playing Utah – they had him day to day, and he had a torn ACL. Mm. So, wow. LA is the Clippers are notorious about being disingenuous whenever it comes to injury reports. So, there's no telling what's going on with Kawhi right now. And James wow. Harden, James Harden shooting forty percent from the field since he's been back from that shoulder injury. Well, I'm, I'm glad you said this because it's time to take out to the Luca Lounge. Let's go to the Luca Lounge right quick. Oh, sweet. Check 
Check this out. Check this out, ladies and gentlemen. Tim McMahon tweeted this not too long ago. Well, actually, quite a bit ago. Kawhi Leonard will miss his fourth straight game due to right knee inflammation. Huh. Hey, she did. In your medical opinion, what does that mean? <laughs> he's he's going to play. He's going to play. They're just resting him because they know they're going to get fifth or fourth. So. I thought he said cardiac arrest. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. yeah. You, you, so you have no diagnosis for um, the no, I, I just I just think they're being cautious. You got to say something, mm-hmm. right? You got to put something down. What does inflammation okay. mean, though? That little bit of right. swelling. Yeah. No, nah, it's, it's got to be substantial swelling. But then again, yeah. but no, but all right, here, here's the thing. Like, all right, so maybe what if, what if the, the Clippers are trying to just keep him out to let him rest and they're saying that this is um, uh, like an injury, but we know it's uh, not an injury? Right. That's 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 messing with the, the basketball gods, right? So hopefully <clears throat> they are reporting legitimate stuff. Now, if it is inflammation, we know Kawhi is known to have a deeper injury than what is led to believe. Kind of like what you alluded to, Joe. If 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 Kawhi's not ready, bro, I think the Clippers look like the more, you know. Look like the, the better uh, platter on the plate for the playoffs. I think so. And and this Maverick, Luke has got a he's got a history too of breaking teams up. I mean, he broke up mm. Utah. Ooh, can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> he he broke up Phoenix, and I would like to see him break up a couple teams, um, because the teams that the teams that are like like who I would consider like really challenges for the Mavericks are going to be teams like Denver, the Clippers, um, Minnesota, uh, Phoenix, you know, those teams right there, if they don't play well this off season, this playoff season, rather there's a, they have to make changes and they might have to make some major changes because they can't roll it back with the same lineup, right? You can't right. finish in the top three in in a conference and um, and then roll back the same people and expect the same results. I mean, you have to make changes, and and I think those teams, especially since those are all second apron teams, they've got. I mean, Big J, what do you think, man? I mean, I think those teams, if they don't win, they've got to kind of break it up. Big J. <laughs> big, big J looking at cars, man. He's looking at the a new, a new what, vehicle. What do y'all think? I mean, what what do y'all think? I actually agree ahead, with you Diff. about the Clippers. I think they if they have a bad outing, I mean, if they play decent and they lose in seven games or something, I don't think you break it up. But if you, you can't hear me? fall apart, then yeah. Yeah, you now. Okay. Yeah, I was saying. No, I was saying what, what he was saying. I said the problem is the teams over the, in the second apron. I said unless you're doing trades for teams that, are below the cap, there's not a whole lot you can do because remember, you have to do dollar for dollar trades. You don't get that 125 percent uh, of, the, the, of the salary cap match thing, so it's going to make it real hard to do. And you can't aggregate players either. Yeah, but you can you can get off of contracts though. And I'm saying if you trade to somebody below who's who's under the cap, they could accept your player. Yeah. 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 So I mean, so like, what would you do? You gonna trade? Uh, What's the like a uh, Kevin Durant to uh, OKC or something? I mean, you trade Cat out of there. So, um, are you talking about uh, Minnesota? Yo, I'm talking about Minnesota. I mean, Denver. I think Denver's going to keep rolling this this five man lineup that they got and just trying to make uh, improvements from around the margins. You know, I think Denver's going to. They're not going anywhere, but I think the Clippers and Phoenix are, are definitely, and maybe even Minnesota would have to look at some of the things. And I was looking at it tonight and, and those lineups are it's super expensive next year. And they have like eight players under contract and they're all up against the cap. 
or excuse me, they're all up against or over the second apron. So, so I mean, if you're Minnesota, who do you get rid of? If you have to get rid of one a guy, that makes a lot of money. I mean, I, I, the problem is this: you start talking about they have to trade somebody like Cat. I don't think Gobert could be traded because I don't think anybody wants that contract. I don't think Ant would be traded because he's he's Ant. But so it looks like Cat, who's like way overpaid for his production and injury history, and then you got other players who's got the the most value, I think, for his contract and his production is people like Nas Reed. And they like even like Jaden McDaniels, that dude's making like 30, 28 or something like that. He's making credit crazy money. I mean, Cat makes the most sense, but who's going to take Cat off your hands and being that he's overpaid and on a big extension? We say that, but there's always idiot teams like look at like the Bullet or not Bullets, but the Wizards. I mean, they've been making moron decisions for three decades now. So I think Gobert could be traded to like a Hawks or something because they need centers and they if they want to keep uh, Trey happy and have him on the court and not be a liability, you got to get for a guy like Gobert that can block shots. What's that young guy? Though? I thought the Hawks, the Hawks thought the uh, the African guy was the center of the future. He's been doing bad. Uh, <laughs> He's not playing good. I know. Before the season, they were talking about him being the you know the center for the next ten years. And... Yeah, not gonna happen. What uh, about Hunter? They're, the Hawks are they're gonna have to get off of assets because like they they gave away three picks for Dejounte. So I bet you they trade. I bet you they trade Trey uh, Trey um, Trey Young. So I gotta tell you, yeah, San Antonio, San Antonio is sitting pretty, man. They got the if most you... picks out of everybody. They got a great we'll player. See. They're gonna be some. They're talking about San Antonio trading for uh, for Hawk, for Trey. Yeah, uh, I don't know if they will, man. That'd be a dangerous thing. It's not Pop's type of player. And when he made the team for the, remember they they've been snubbing him in the Olympics and all these other World Cup teams. Yeah, but if I was Trey Young, I mean, I would be, I would be all over that. He could go at, <clears throat> he could go to San Antonio and play with Pop and rehab his image because his image is he's a Snickers bar like Lamelo Ball, just empty calories, you know. But in that, wasn't that the big talk too? Though they were saying that if they do that trade, then. Uh, well, the Hawks get their picks back. Yeah, but they said we they, traded three. I, I would just tell them, I was like, look, we're not going to do that. I mean, we traded you three picks, and you got two years of John DeJounte Murray. You know, and that we're not doing that. I mean. But I'm saying, but what, is, what does he need, though? He's like. He needs a point. He's a distressed asset, though. But they can. Oh, no. Yeah, he's not. On, you're not on our timetable. We're not going to let you hold us over the barrel here. I mean, we'll give you. I would give Listen, I think Trey Young is worth two first round picks. So, yeah. and if I could, especially if I could get off the cell, who I think is is absolutely not the kind of player that I want on my team. I mean, I've watched that dude dribble around and do like Nash Nash dribbles to not p- p- pass the ball to to Wimby. I mean, just I've watched him dribble out the shot clock instead of passing to Wimby. He's I, I wouldn't want that guy, and he's making like what twenty eight a year. So I got to come up with fifteen more to match salaries. No problem, you know. So they got a the San Antonio's got some knuckleheads that it would be. They need to change the scenery. But San Antonio's below the cap, so I don't think they even have to match salaries. They just have to take him in, and they can send something back. But they don't have to match dollar for dollar. Yeah, well, that's a good point. There you go. So. Yeah, well, this is the uh, the injury report for the Rockets tomorrow. I'm in Thompson, probable uh, with a left ankle sprain and a right fifth finger tendon injury, and then Jashawn Tate, Alfred Shingoon, Stephen Adams, and Tari Eason are all out tomorrow. Just so you guys know, uh, they actually they're minus four point three million, or they're twenty four point nine million under the tax is uh, San Antonio. And their cap space is four point three negative. Four point three mm. million. So they they can't just, they gotta give something with value with money. Who's who's coming off the who's coming off after the season and who's expiring? Uh Seti Oddman. 
Yeah, that's, that's the only pretty one. much it. And and this other guy, Sandro, I don't even know who he is. Sandro Muma Goleshvi or something. Oh, Muma, I know. Like I've seen him. Million together. What about so? Well, here's a question: What if they traded? Um, what's his face from Toronto? Along with the picks, Pirtles, Pirtles draft pick. No, I'm talking about you know the uh, the point guard from Toronto that they got. Uh, I forgot his name. Oh no, that's Houston. I'm sorry, wrong team. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I was thinking wrong team. Van Vliet. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, they don't. Yeah, they don't really have much unless they do. What's a uh, Sheldon? Keldon Johnson would have to Keldon, yeah. twenty million. They'd have to probably include him. They probably could move him. I think they could move him out. Or Zach Collins is seven seven, but still, that doesn't add up to enough to make the deal. So was yeah. Trey making forty three? Yeah, he's making a lot, man. Yeah. yeah. So how much is Luca making? Because I know Trey signed lower than Luca because he didn't have any uh, first team. Oh, I'll tell you right now. He's making forty million next year. Uh, this year it's forty, so I think it's oh. fifty, isn't it? I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there was there was so there was some kind of weird thing. So if you made it like the first two years, then you were eligible, which Luca made all NBA first two years. But if you made it in the last year, then you you were also eligible. So when Trey Young made it in the last year of his eligibility, that one year equaled two, which doesn't make much sense to me. Um, but that's the way it went. And so he got his yeah. super max. But I thought his was less than Lucas. I thought he I thought he signed for about thirty million less than Lucas, even though he did get a max. I thought he got a super max that he qualified for, but not the same as Lucas. Yeah, it was you're talking Luca signed for two twelve and Trey signed for one seventy two, but um, he, he hit his bonuses though, right? So he got more Yeah, that's what I that's what I'm saying is he hit that one year bonus, so there was some kind of anomaly in the rules where Trey Young got the same bonus as Luca, even though Luca had three first team all NBAs and Trey had one second or third team, whatever he got. And so that all worked out to be equal. It's transitive, but not necessarily good for the Hawks there. So yeah, it was something yeah, weird like that. There's all the contracts right here for the Mavericks. Yeah. It's going to be tough to make deals, man. I don't think it's going to be as easy as everybody thinks. I think, I think Tim's the only one that's got real value because of the expiring. Yep. I mean, yeah, but 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 Jake, Big J, that only has value though if he, there's somebody with uh, a contract that's more than that that's not expiring in a position that can play the three for us um, and can is a not a streaky shooter like Tim. So, so here's my question though, right? If you're Phoenix Suns. You don't do too good in the playoffs, but they want to run it back, right? And you know you're going to lose that one shooting guy. What's his name? The shooter they have. That the uh, guy everybody hates. The uh, guy <laughs> Grant. Um, not, no. Ah, what the hell is his name? The white guy. Yeah. From Duke. He's shooting like forty some percent from three. Yeah. Like he's top percentage in the league or something. So if he's gonna, if they're going to lose so him for nothing, do you tell? Do you make a deal with uh, the Mavs for Tim Hardaway Jr., knowing you can cut that contract a year later? But you have to be a sign and trade, though. Yeah, well, here's, that's, here's why that, that's what I'm saying. That, a sign and trade, yeah. They, they can re sign him for $18.75 million. They can sign him for a four year, $18.75 per year contract. And that's basically what Timmy's making. And if they're trying to get off salary, it doesn't help them next year. And they're on a short window with Kevin Durant. So, and I, I listen, I would love to make that deal, trade Timmy for that guy. Why can't I remember his name? I'll get it. I'll get it. TGK. Uh, What's up? <laughs> it's uh, Douchebag. Grant, uh, uh, Allen, Grayson Allen. Grayson Allen. Grayson Allen. Allen? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, Y'all struggling with that? Yeah. So, why, yeah, was... why would you trade? He, no, but I'm he, saying, but what I'm saying is, if you make the deal, right, and you if the Mavs are willing to do that deal, and they sign him for whatever years and the same contract as Timmy, then couldn't they easily take that make that deal because the first year would be the same contract amount? 
but why would you do that if you were Phoenix? You would have to have you, Dallas is going to so have to attach. So you don't lose for nothing. But, hold on, but they're going to have to attach picks to it though, because he could and, just stay in Phoenix. He could just stay in Phoenix for the same. He could sign for four years and what are eighteen point seven five times four, whatever that is. I can't remember. No, I, that's the thing though. Like they would be even worse than they are now if they do that. That's too much Not, money. But they're, well, off, they're they're already off that contract right now. Yeah, you're saying that they lose him for nothing, but the thing is, yeah. Tim's an expiring contract, so yeah. if they don't want Tim, they still lose him for nothing. Yeah, well, not, exactly. No, That's but, why you got to attach oh, exactly I, I, big Yeah, game. yeah, yeah. I yeah, see what you you're gotta, saying. You got to attach a first-round pick to it. Yeah, I get what you're saying, because then they could easily uh, just, if they want that space. But if they can't get anyone for that price, that's as good as Timmy. Yeah, I mean he's he's like he's basically right now a wash for them. They can either pay the money or not pay the money, yeah. and and they're in the same place. They're, I mean they're not as good without him, so yeah. And that's a big downgrade. So I mean they would they might try to hold you up. I mean shit, they were trying to hold up. Chicago was trying to hold people up for two first round picks for for that's um, crazy for the the white kid from from, from Brian, and then that. The, the yeah, white kid, old, yeah, <laughs> he's talking about, he's talking about uh, Texas. Hey, check, check this, uh, check this trade out by fans, Po. Um, by the way, I, I got to end the show a little early today, uh, since I have to be up early to make it to the Mavs uh, sell thing tomorrow. Um, but anyway, I normally end the show around this time anyway. But wanted to show y'all this, uh, this from Frank. Salute to Frank for sending me this, uh, from fans, Po. The actual. Twitter page. Uh, this is a deal uh, for Micah Bridges, right? So the Mavericks will get Micah Bridges, and they will send out Tim Hardaway, Olivia Maxon's Prosper, Jaden Hardy, and two first round picks. Too uh, much. Again, we'll go. I would not do that. Yeah. I would not do and that. Yanni, let me ask y'all. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're all like, nope. Nope. That is a terrible deal for the Mavericks. Mm. If you take yeah, out. Oh, oh, Max, if you take him out, ah, it's tap I mean, Mikael Bridges is only averaging about 17 points a game, so it's not fantastic. He's not like a superstar. And so that, that superstar trade there, giving up yeah. the expiring contract, yeah. two young promises, and two first-round picks, no. That's, that's, more yeah. than, that's more than what they got for Kyrie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah that's I, between... I agree. Yeah, this is a bit much. It is a bit excessive because I, I think you get a better player for this deal, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Hell yes. Hell but yes. The thing is, we don't need another max contract superstar, and that's the problem. That's what people keep getting hung up on. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we, we don't need that. We need to put more quality players that are good, not, you know, not superstar low, but, you know, up there. We need here. Here's what I'm thinking. We need somebody on a three or four year deal that's making like probably 25, which is too rich for a team's blood. Um, that can fill up a stat sheet, right? That can play the three again, and that they would be happy to take. But they just they're trying to dump salary, right? They want a draft pick, and they would be happy to take Timmy in a salary filler on a one year deal. See, I, I get. And I gave you one last night. Who was that? Big J, tell me. Everybody showed me that. I, I said trade Timmy and all draft capital for Laurie because Laurie fixes a ton of problems. He's not the best defender, but he's a stretch. He could be a stretch five in those small ball lineups. He can shoot the three. He's athletic. He can rebound. He can block shots on the help. And they're not they're not on the trajectory to win on his timetable. He's only 26 years old, but he's not on their timetable because – they're, they're, they they got to rebuild. They got to go do a full rebuild, and he's too good to sit through a full rebuild. I why, mean, why not? Uh, why not Denny? Doesn't Denny meet that criteria? I don't think Denny's better than Laurie Markinen. Yeah. I actually like Denny because of the five part. Because he always likes to play guys at the five, and like our coach. And Laurie's seven foot. Or, yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you get Laurie, at least he can shoot threes. This guy's yeah. not a good three point shooter, Denny. Yeah, he's only making seventeen point three. That's crazy. That's what I'm saying. And Laurie's up for next. He's up after this. So that's what the, I was watching. I was on a Jazz uh, website the other day. They were talking about they're they're torn whether or not they should extend him because they're like he's a one time All Star, 
and he clearly deserves it, but they're like they they're not on his timetable, so they don't know what to do. They don't want to just throw the money away. He's going to be a non-restricted free agent. Completely. I think he's got one year left after this year, if I'm not mistaken. So, but he, like is, says, he, is he unrestricted after that year though, or is he restricted? after this year? Yeah. So the thing is, we could still do. We still have his bird rights. We could extend him ourselves if we do the trade. Yeah, he's Gina. only partially guaranteed too. That's like kind of shocking. Yeah. So, well. Gina asked, "Who would y'all take then, Lori or Denny? Who would fit better for me?" Lori for me. It's uh, Lori. You could you could yeah. move PJ down to the three. And yep. you could keep Laurie at the four, and that makes your team st- <laughs> that makes your team a, literally a dynasty. I ain't gonna man, lie. We don't, that, we don't that's have, sick. I man, I would be concerned about on ball defense. So mm. Lori can move his feet pretty good, man. He's not that yeah. bad. Not, he's not gonna be guarding point guards though. Like no, but we are, we're pretty bad if we're gonna let that happen. But who's gonna guard <laughs> the Mavericks? You know, like that's yeah, that is just a killer lineup, bro. That's crazy. I would yeah, love stri- to figure it out. I would love to have yeah. that problem and figure it out. Because all we got to do is is resign DJJ. Like I said, give him the the biannual exception, and then throw something you know minimum or whatever at uh at Drummond in the offseason. Get your third center showed up. Get rid of Pro- Get rid of uh, Powell. Get rid of Maxi. However you can. Way stretch wave Maxi if you want to make him an assistant coach. But yeah, Trey Powell. Like I said, get a get. A, a second round pick or a box of Skittles or something. I think, I think Maxi is that. I, I think actually Maxi probably has trade value. I don't think that the, Dwight Powell trade him, trade him, trade him, <laughs> trade, him. <laughs> trade him. Do you really trade believe that, Joe? You think he has trade value right now? I think he's perceived as as being a a rotation piece in a on a good team. So he's trade him, ASAP. Yeah. Wow. All right, man. I, I don't. I don't mean to end the conversation, man. But uh, Dad, man, might have to end the go, show right go now. Go to sleep, man. Yeah, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end the show. But uh, again, it, I'll have plenty of content coming tomorrow. Uh, pre-game show, and then uh, we'll. I'll be doing the the vlog, so I'll get the vlog posted as soon as possible. But uh, uh again, to to be able to beat the lines, man. Salute, salute to the little, salute to the homie, man. Uh, I'll be able to to be shopping. Uh, before the public gets to, so that's pretty cool. So you know, I could probably give me a, a Luca jersey for the low low again. Cool. Huh? And and maybe I try to buy some extra items to like give away, but I'll I'll see what kind of budget I got. I I really don't know. Well, you know, if you need my sizes, uh, I can send them to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't, we'll we'll see. Uh, I'll, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. All right, guys. I appreciate y'all being here, man. Sorry about the short show. Anyway, uh, it normally ends around this time, but yeah, but we got we did some good. We did some good tonight. I know y'all not WWE fans, so I know y'all didn't want to talk wrestling, but you know, <laughs> I'll save that for a, a different conversation. But uh, appreciate y'all being here, man. It's been your boy TGK here with Big J and Div X Ray, and uh, tomorrow we'll be doing a, a pregame show, and uh, I'll catch y'all there, man. Appreciate y'all being here. Take care. Good one. Adios, adios. Amen.